How's everybody doing? This is the uh, third episode of Edelbrock Live. Bad for a Wednesday. Middle awesome, of the week, right? you know. Got to do the first part now heading towards the weekend. At least the, the temperature has gone down. It's not as hot. Yeah, <laughs> last week was pretty rough. Here in California, we had some pretty high temperatures last Thursday and Friday. I mean, it, it's, it, was, it was pretty brutal. Yeah, this weekend, I think we saw some break, uh, record break. Like in, uh, was it 112 in the valley somewhere? Yeah, I know like where that. I live. I live inland, not too far from the coast, but it was like 114 on Friday. Jesus it's crazy. Christ. So yeah. it's, that's that's not, not, not good heat. No. Yeah. I said that all the air conditioners were all sold out everywhere. Oh, I mean, you couldn't man. find anything. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, H122 supercharger and also the Enforcer supercharger, two of the superchargers we offer for a small block Chevy application and. Uh, you know, Eric's going to give us some uh, insight as far as the history of the H122. We used to have it back in the days. Uh, you want to fill us in with some of that history, Eric? Yeah, back in 2007, we brought this to market. Um, it was was this exact setup. It actually looked a lot similar, but it was kind of a uh, it was a deal we did with, with a kind of a partner, and it was a really cool supercharger. It's kind of the first time we got into supercharging in the modern era. I think they did Vic had done some stuff way way back, um, so it was kind of a neat little thing for us to finally get in supercharging for the small block Chevy. Crowd. Um, we, so we brought it to market in 2007. The first catalog was 2007. Okay. And um, and that was in a, a kit form like this, but also we had a crate engine at the time. Okay. Um, which used the same combination, it, our standard like you know RPM level heads. Yeah. You know it makes uh, it's a good little unit. It's it's a H122. Uh, you know it's a, from Eaton. It makes 507 horsepower, um, and it was a, just a good solid little motor. I mean it's a great supercharger. The great thing people like about it. Is it's nice and compact. It fits under the hood. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, so we had that from 2007 to 2012, and then just to, because of you know, supply issues, we couldn't get them to market on time. Had some stuff, so we kind of had to walk away from. Unfortunately, we hated to do that because a good little seller. I mean, yeah. this thing like the guys back in manufacturing would tell you they would do three to six of these a week. So there was times that there were probably one a day going out. Wow. If somebody was buying them, it's a really reasonable, perfect yeah. little unit. Um, so in the interim, when that happened, then we brought the Enforcer, which is a complete, fresh, new design gotcha. that our t team did in-house, and that's still in our lineup today. And then just at the end of this last year, we brought this little guy back. And I say little, it's little, but it still puts out a lot of power. I mean, it puts out 500 horsepower, um, but the same uh, rotor pack was used okay. by Ford in the GT500. Really? Okay. Um, in 2010 and 12, and in that system, it made 540 horsepower. Wow. So it tells you the potential for it. I mean, we're running a pretty basic setup, but you, you know, if you put a smaller pulley on it, yeah. better heads, bigger cam, it's got the potential to make, you know, well over 500. Yeah. And who knows? It's like like any supercharger, how much boost you put on it depends on where it's going to end up at. Yeah. But, so it's it's we're glad to see it back. Um, Eddie will kind of get into specs about it. What makes it different from the Enforcer? But it's just a, it's I think I'm glad to see it back. It's yeah. a it's a good little basic supercharger. I mean, I remember going to car shows and seeing the old uh, Edelbrock superchargers on like uh, you know. Silverados and stuff like that, where it fits under the stock hood, you just have to throw in a carburetor on there and you're good to go. The main difference between this one and the uh, Enforcer uh, is the rotor size. This is a 2.3 liter. This is a 1.22 liter. One of the big differences as well is on this one, you could actually run intercooler. So it's a water to air intercooler, so it does cool down the charge temps and all that kind of stuff. On this setup, you don't run any of that. So that's where you get the high differences. On this, you can't really tell here because the manifold is still under. So it's what, probably about eight more inches on, under yeah, this one. Yeah, this is, we don't have yeah. the full assembly, but this is really a big commitment. There's a yeah. lot of height involved. You're definitely punching a hole in the hood. Yeah, that's, get this that's on. what I'm Holes in their hood, so they don't go with something like that. I know, you know, being in Australia, those guys are all they, about- They don't care. They don't care. They The bigger the blower, the better. <laughs> So it's like, I a, saw it's like a badge of pride yeah. that's sticking out of it. I saw for the uh, summer nats this past January, so yeah. it was pretty cool to see them out there. Um, you know, some of the main specs is price-wise. Um, you're looking at about twenty-eight hundred bucks for something like this. On this one, you're looking at about forty-two hundred dollars for the starting kit. Um, again, the size you're talking about a one-point-two liter uh, as opposed to a two-point-three. They're yeah. both running in rotors, so it's a good rotor pack regardless. Um, oh, yeah. We make this one only for the small block Chevy with Vortec heads or conventional. And that one, it, it, we offer it for the small block Chevy and the LS. So, you know, for all the LS guys, you could actually put one of those on there. Um, mm -hmm. like and if you guys, uh, now, if you want it for small block Ford, small block Mopar, let us know. Because I know Ford has been asked and thrown around I've, quite yeah, a bit for shows. That yeah, so we, we definitely are gonna develop this for more vehicle platforms. So if you guys wanna chime in, 
please let us know. We'll just pass it over to the guys in engineering and go, hey, here's what you need to make next. There's demand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. And that, you know, again, one of the main differences on this one, you just run a single carb. On that one, you can't run a single carb. You have to run either, it's offered in EFI or dual carb application. So you have to run a dual setup. Um, again, on something like this with a full built, you know, race gas application, we've seen horsepower about 753 to 800 uh, foot pounds of torque. So, I mean, it's a monster. Um, you know, it's it's a 2300 rotor pack like we run in all our Corvettes, Camaro kits and all that stuff. Um, this one here on the stock pulley, you're looking at about five pounds. So five, 500 horsepower on five pounds of boost, that's pretty, that's pretty good. And it gives you good longevity. You know what I mean? Like that's that kind of boost you're talking, that's gonna last a long time. And that's why we offered a crate engine with this at the time that you know you go back 2012 we yep. had a, a small block crate motor made 507 and at five pounds of boost it's going to last a long time you're going to get a lot of miles out of it it's yep. not going to stress the motor yeah you know it's just it's a good combo and i mean i think and i think 500 horsepower i know nowadays people are talking thousand horsepower yeah. they're talking 800 horsepower you know the, the oes are bringing 700 horsepower vehicles to the street but you know what for a muscle car a street ride guy 500 horsepower is and a, plenty to get in trouble and with a conventional it. small block chevy you know 350 yeah. with the, you know a set of our heads a stock bottom end and I mean, 500 horsepower right out of the gate. It's pretty good. It's not, well, yeah, I mean, it's nothing that, you know, like I said, it's it's well, I mean, that's, it's you're not pushing anything too hard. And, and like I said, 500, I mean, I'm old enough, 500, it's, it's a lot of trouble you can get into. Yeah. A lot of burnouts you can do with 500 horsepower. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, looking at some questions here we're getting, um, I got one from, uh, I'm probably gonna mess this up, but Concho Tumar, can, you, can this be installed on an air-cooled flat four? Unfortunately, no, we've only got it for a V8 small block yep. Chevy at this time but like i said we said before if you guys kind of reach out to us on social media and let us know what you want to make it for we'll pass that on to the guys that yep. make that decision and start getting more of these i know back when we sold them in between 2007 and 12 yep. we had a lot of guys going when's it coming out for the mopar yep. what can i get for small block ford and really for us you know from here up everything's the same it's just the manifold that has to be designed exactly. i'm saying only i mean i'm not yeah. i'm not an engineer but <laughs> it's not like we have to complete you know do complete system like this it's yep. it's a little bit modular so we're that definitely i know there's more plans in the work exactly and i mean another thing to consider if you're going if you're deciding to go with something like this there's a lot of it's not just a manifold change like it is on something like this on that, you're talking about you know the watered air in a cooler. You're talking the pumps, the, and again, we offer that in EFI as well. So if you want to do a fuel management system and all that, I mean, you're able to do it, but it's a lot more work involved. With this, it's pretty much a you know manifold change, and it comes with all the back and bracketry yeah. and the I mean, pulleys and everything. And it uses the standard you know the standard Fiat setup, so the front end, so you don't have to change any of that. I mean, yep. people may want to do something unique, but really, it's it's it, yeah, it's made to be a weekend swap. Yeah, absolutely, and, and at 2,800 bucks, that's. That's a really good deal. I mean, like I said, like I said, the big key to it, which we get a lot of people, is it fits under the hood of under the hood of most muscle cars. Yep. I know Vic Edelbrock back when he was alive, he had one his 32 Ford at That's one right. point on That's his right. uh, the Boyd car, and it fit underneath the hood just great. It was That's polished awesome. and. We had it in polish and the thing looked really cool, but it, that's that's the great thing about it. The system still compact and small yep. enough to where it is kind of a stealthy system. You can have it in the car and nobody's gonna really know you got it yep. until you you know until you take off with the lights. Exactly. So, super cool, man. I mean, it's it's a. I'm like I said, I'm so glad to see it back because I know it was a good seller for us for a lot of years and it just. Uh, it's a nice system, you know. Now we only have it available in as cast right now, so how you see it here. Yep. I know again that's something that um, we'll take. We'll do anything in the way of special orders. So if you want it polished, you want it black, we'll figure it out. If not, you can also t take it yourself and do it. It's not much to take it apart and do it, but like I said, we'll we'll do that. I know yep. we've done it in the past. If we want to special order it in black or polished, we'll do it because we do have now. This one is available. This is a polished unit yep. here. But you can also see we've got this available in black as well. It looks pretty looks yeah. pretty cool. In black. Actually, got a picture of the one in black here. You check it out. There you go. Uh, yeah, to answer a question from Danny Martin, what is the cost for a 350? And if you're joining us late, the cost is 2,800 bucks. Yep. Is what you're looking at in the way of that's just the, the blower kit. Yeah, yep. it's the blower, the belt, the drive plug. You know, pretty much what you need to get on the car. So yep. it's not like I said. I think that's fairly reasonable. Yep. Yeah, I think I got a question too. If we offered it as a crate engine yet, but we don't. I believe not, we do not. Not um, yet, but I think we need to. I mean, I think we did before, and and I know this sold pretty well. So I think that's again another question we can just run up the line. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions on the uh, on the live stream? No, not really. I got oh, I got somebody asking about the uh, this is out kind of outside of the scope. It's what's the benefit of a blower over a turbo setup on a 5.3 liter LS? You know, it's it's, it's that's that gets into a whole nother discussion. <laughs> we can have another day about yeah. turbo versus supercharging. Absolutely. You know, there's definitely the pros and cons of each one. 
yeah. pluses and minuses, you know, and a lot of it really comes and, uh, down to what are you using it for? Exactly. Driving it, if it's a race application, it just all depends. We could, uh, if you guys have uh, a lot of those kind of questions, I mean, we could we could develop, you know, we could do a whole live stream just for that. Now for LS, like I said, you know, if you're joining it late, we do have this available for LS for rectangular port and cathedral port yep. set up. So this one is the Enforcer, which you know it's, it's more money, but it's set up for that. So yep. if you got an LS application, the only option you got is the Enforcer. You got small block Chevy. The only option the other option you got right now is the H122. Absolutely. Let me see anything else. I think we're Getting some thumbs up, so there's some forced induction fans out there. Awesome, cool, awesome. But yeah, I think that's pretty much. It. I think we've answered some of the questions. Um, trying to get to them all. Um, cost for the five three, somebody's asking, which would be this guy you're talking. You know, like I said, starting price forty two hundred bucks. Yep. Take a look at your retailer and see. You know, like anything, sometimes you know, depending if you're going EFI carbureted, and then you have to you factor know. in the uh, the intercooler. Yeah. I believe that comes with the with the water system and the hoses and stuff like that. But you have to just factor in which which uh, water, uh, you know, the heat. Uh, the, what is it called? The uh, heat. The um, heat exchanger. The heat exchanger. There you go. So thank you. Yeah, the heat exchanger. You just have to decide which heat exchanger you're actually looking for because we have a, a variety of sizes. Yeah. Um, so you just have to decide which one you need and then decide if you're going to EFI or carbureted and go from there. We actually offer it. So yeah. you could actually buy it with two two carburetors, our, our carburetors that are already <coughs> jetted correctly for the for the application. So, I mean, whatever you guys need. Uh, Peter Devonshire asked, will it fit a Dodge 5.7? Unfortunately, no, no, not at this time. No. But if you do have a late model Dodge 5.7 in a, you know, Passenger LX, car truck, yeah. we've got that yep. kit, and that's a whole different conversation. Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, will it fit my Honda, Ryan Pat Blicka? <laughs> unfortunately, no. no. Unless you want to put a small block in your Honda, there you go. It'll fit, but yeah. no. Unfortunately, we don't make anything for the Honda right now. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, I think that's it. I think uh, that covers it all. If you guys yeah. have any other questions, like we said, uh, you know, if you guys have any topics for future. Uh, live streams just let us know and we'll we'll try to make sure and cover all of them all right absolutely yeah thanks for joining us again and we're signing off all right take care guys